Okay, well, um, <clears throat> and um, let's start it off by talking about when and why you moved into Golden Manors. When and why we bought the property? Correct. <clears throat> okay. Well, the uh, <clears throat> my mother and dad came from Ireland, and uh, my dad came over first, and then my uh, uh, mother came over, and they got married, and uh, uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, what I think. Cut it off for a moment. <laughs> sure. Alright, uh, the um, uh, <clears throat> they came to Florida in 1926 and my dad uh, built the uh, uh, Lauderdale Country Club and uh, so we went uh, since 1926 we kept coming back to Fort Lauderdale and uh, so finally uh, my father was going to retire and the mother and dad decided that uh, maybe they built a golf course. And so they looked around for some property and they found uh, 40 acres here, uh, more or less. And uh, the, uh, my dad uh, drew the, uh, uh, the plans on the back of a cigar box, of all things. And, uh, he went back to keep his job in uh, Connecticut and uh, he left my mother and I to build the golf courses. And we, uh, so we uh, had about 50 people and uh, tractors and scoops and so forth. And uh, uh, we completed the golf course and uh, the uh, And we got we got open for for the first year. I think it took us about two years to do it. And uh, so then uh, we got the golf course open, and uh, the people from the uh, we had people come from the Hillsborough Club in Pompano and from the Lauderdale Beach Hotel, and they uh, uh, played golf here. We had the greens fee was the magnificent sum of two dollars and the, uh, the we had caddies of course and uh, <clears throat> the uh, golf course was operated then for a long time and finally uh, the uh, the war came along and so the golf course was closed during the war and I uh, went off to the service I was over in Esperito Santo and uh, we, uh, uh, my mother and dad uh, held down the place here as best they could. And uh, when I, when I, I got to, to be a, uh, a lieutenant, a second lieutenant, and then, uh, uh, well, I was stationed in New Orleans of all, of all places. That's of interest uh, lately. And anyway, I, I enjoyed that very much, being in New Orleans. And finally, the, uh, I was discharged, and I came back to uh, to Fort Lauderdale, and uh, we had to clean off the golf course, and it, it had grown up, and so at that time you were allowed to burn, so we burned it off completely, and uh, the uh, but the burning was was good because the ashes uh, uh, got the grass growing again. And so we, we got the golf course open and um, operated for a few more years. In the meantime, I decided that, uh, well, uh, I had, had a decision to make. I was practicing law downtown. Oh, so I, I decided to, uh, to go to law school. Uh, well, first I went to the University of Miami for a couple of semesters. And then I read in their bulletin where they would allow a veteran to go to law school. And so I uh, went down to see the dean and I was successful in getting into law school. And so I uh, 
uh, graduated uh, and became a lawyer in uh, 1950, uh, 1951. And uh, <clears throat> then, then I uh, uh, had a decision to make whether I practice downtown. And so what the decision I made was uh, my dad had died in the meantime and my mother was operating the golf course by herself. And so I moved my office into the clubhouse and uh, that worked out pretty good. Uh, so I took care of the golfers and when I had a client, I'd take care of the client and uh, it worked out very well. And then finally we built uh, a six-door building in, uh, on Wilson Drive. And then one of those stores I took as my office. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, Son George just used the office and Son Jay used the office. And uh, it's just been a, a Richardson office is what it was. Oh, and then we finally ended up with uh, Insight for the Blind came and uh, 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 we, we let them have the building and that's where they, they got started. And they're down here on 3rd Avenue and at the moment I'm president of Insight for the Blind. The, then uh, after practicing law for a while, uh, I took part in uh, Wilton Manor's politics and I got to be uh, president of the Wilton Manor's city council. And uh, then I, I uh, uh, was, let's see, president of the city council, and then uh, we, we rocked along for a while. And uh, could you turn the machine off a minute? Sorry. Uh, I became uh, chairman of the Wilton Manor's uh, Police Civil Service uh, Board, and then uh, Judge Anderson, uh, who was a probate judge, county judge, was retiring and he, um, he called me to uh, see if I'd be interested in, in an appointment. And so I uh, said yes, and uh, Governor Kirk appointed me as the, uh, to be county judge. Then after I was county judge then until uh, 1970, from 68 to 70, and in 1970 I was uh, uh, appointed a circuit judge in Broward County. And uh, the, uh, of course, uh, by that time, we had closed the golf course, and uh, the, uh, I uh, attended to my judging duties, and uh, I became, uh, uh, let's see, uh, I was appointed to the, uh, uh, oh, I became city attorney of the uh, city of Wilton Manors from 86 to 92, and then I was a member of the Broward County Charter Review Commission from November of 87 to June of 88. Uh, the, uh, when I practiced law, I practiced mostly real estate and probate law, and uh, I'm trying to think of what else. It, uh, would be of interest to um, explain uh, if you could explain how the, uh, explain how uh, the politics were when you were involved in the politics of Wilton Matters. Well, uh, it it worked very well. I, I uh, 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 knocked on doors and, and was elected. However, I did run for mayor of Wilton Matters, and uh, the. I lost by three votes, and which is probably a good thing. But anyway, I, I uh, 
the moral of the story was knock on a few more doors. And uh, anyway, I, I uh, uh, enjoyed the politics in Wilton Manors. I didn't have any difficulty with uh, uh, any of the, the politicians. Uh, uh, we all got along real fine. Um, describe Wilton Manors um, back in the 30s and 40s. All right, when we, when we first bought the property, uh, there were three houses in Wilton Manors. Uh, one of them was owned by a lawyer by the name of Carl Ison, who is his son now is the writer, the uh, uh, the author, and um, no, that's his grandson, uh, the author. Uh, then Wilton Manors grew. Uh, uh, a man by the name of Hagen bought some property along the golf course and he built some houses there and that started things going. And uh, we, uh, uh, it just grew beautifully. Uh, there was, uh, 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 the, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, the mayor. Who was the mayor, Diane, when I, uh, um, Tracy Stafford? Or no, not Tracy Stafford. Uh, uh, the first mayor of the history of the city is Dave Turner? No, the, um, uh, anyway. Is he, uh, in that photograph? Hmm? is he in that photograph? The person you no, no. He's, uh, Frank Starling. Frank Starling. Uh, Frank Starling became uh, a mayor and he, he did a nice job in Fulton Manors. Uh, he was, uh, very good, and then of course, Marcia Stafford was on the on, on the council, and uh, Earl Middleton, and uh, uh, a lot of very nice people. I got along with all of them. And uh, now, what else would you like to know? Um, just uh, real quick, you work in Wilton Manors? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's describe what it was like growing up in Wilton Manors. Yeah, um, it was a a real town, village type experience, and that's what was uh, enjoyable about it growing up. Is when I was growing up, the golf course had closed, but the property was still there, and it was heavily wooded, so it was terrific being growing up and having you a know, set of woods in your own backyard. So really enjoyed that. I could see where the outlines were of the golf course, the old holes, and where the, the tee boxes were. And we still had some of the equipment from the golf course, the tractor, which, which I still have is one of my most cherished uh, possessions. And so my great memories uh, here are riding around on the tractor and being in the woods. And uh, there was a gentleman, Buddy Hicks, that worked for my, my grandmother and, and worked here for 60 years. Uh, Buddy, Buddy Hicks worked for us for 60 years. Uh, he was the uh, uh, originally one of the men, one of the 50 men that we used on the golf course, and he stayed with us and uh, uh, was a wonderful man. We uh, uh, enjoyed him a great deal and uh, he was very faithful and uh, a good guy. Came, came here every day until he, uh, he was uh, unfortunately died in a traffic accident, but it was in his 90s and you know every day showed up. It was just uh, Part of the family and part of the of the place, the uh, the house and golf course wouldn't be the same without Buddy and Buddy's involvement. So we miss him very much. So I enjoyed uh, uh, growing up and, and getting to know Buddy and learning lessons from him. Participated in the uh, baseball uh, at Mickle Field, and that was a great experience. Again, a very uh, community experience, which you know, which was nice. When I looked at friends that lived in Fort Lauderdale, they played in leagues and, and did similar things, but it just didn't have the same local uh, feel that, that Will Manors had. Had the, the parades and raised money for the uh, baseball one, the fire trucks down Walton Drive. And it, was a, it was just a very enjoyable experience of kind of living in a village in the middle of a big metropolitan area. Uh, it's, and it's been interesting to see how Will Manors has grown and changed, it, going from a very sleepy, Kind of little town, bedroom community, and um, you know nobody really thought 
too much one way or the other about living in Wilton Manors and then it's been interesting to see it become chic and become um, so gentrified and um, you know it's 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 rewarding to see change um, but it's a very stark contrast from what it what it was when I was growing up in the in the 60s here I don't want to change tips. The, uh, the Wilton Manors so uh... And also, um, when did the towers come down? When did the what? The towers? The towers, the entrance. Oh, oh that, that, I don't remember. I don't remember. I... Thanks. Um, describe the evolution of Wilton Drive, the evolution of Wilton Drive, what it was when you were first here, and then how it's changed over the years. All right. Um, Wilton Drive uh, had a um, uh, a grocery store on it, uh, Ma Manor Market, and that was owned by uh, Frank Starling and uh, I forget who the other gentleman was, but anyway, uh, uh, it was there wasn't there wasn't much to. to Matter of fact, coming back from uh, from uh, the University of Miami, I lived here was in a commuted uh, up by the uh, the other side of the high school. I'd throw the uh, old Buick I had out of gear and see if I couldn't coast down to the <laughs> <laughs> all the way home. <laughs> coast all the way home, and uh, but it's uh, but then uh, we uh, we built this six-door building, and Clayton Lever built a, uh, some stores along the, the drive, and um, the, um, of course, it's, it's, since we've left, it's just blossomed. I mean, it's just been beautiful, the, the nice buildings they have and everything, and of course, it's the real estate boom that was here, and, um, uh, George is a house right uh, in the entrance to the, uh, at least for the way we used to come into the, to the property, and uh, uh, that, that's the. Uh, who who on the cro uh, the uh, drugstore across the street? Chester. Oh, it's Chester Sassadu owned the uh, drugstore across the street, and um, was there forever. Chester was. Uh, a, Nice, nice man. He was the kind, you know, that he was a druggist where you go in and he was, he was your pal. And uh, so he, he did a nice job. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, the best thing that ever happened was Dave Turner became the uh, head of the DOT, the Department of Transportation. And so it's a state road from this bridge to the other bridge down there. At, uh, and, five that's, points? and that's why we get. Uh, we oh, pick, all the way down five points, all the way down 26th? Or no, no, it, well, no, no, no it, it's, a state, it's, uh, it's a state road from uh, this bridge to the bridge as you, uh, you go to five points, or the old Dixie. Bridge of the old days, but uh, that m made us up when they when they uh, put in that uh, then Wilton we'll Drive became something, and uh, uh, thanks to Mr. Turner, and uh, he he did a nice job, and as a matter of fact, the most recent improvement that has been made has been made by the state, and uh, they have been very very generous in uh, what they've done. Um, talk a little bit about the bridges. Hey, talk a little bit about the bridges, because uh, when you when you first moved here, were there any bridges? Were there any bridges, the bridges into the city? Yes. Uh, this this one's been rebuilt, but there were yeah, the, the, all the bridges were in. Yeah, so there was in no, the 30s, there were how many bridges were there coming into Walton Manors? Well, the uh, uh, Andrews. The bridge on 26th Street, the
the one on uh, Old Dixie and, and this bridge, and, and the one over on the, on the Old Dixie. The Old Dixie was the main highway through town. And I remember we had some friends that said, well, we're going to build on Old Dixie because we've, uh, they've got the water there, the, the water's running along, and it's uh, uh, the, main, the main road into Fort Lauderdale. Well, lo and behold, Wilton Drive became the main road. <laughs> and just, it's, uh, it's typical that you can't foresee everything that's going to happen. And then, of course, we, we, uh, there was one thing that we did, and that is we sold uh, a nice piece of the property to uh, Manor Grove, and they put in a, a nice uh, two-story apartments. And they were also were very nice. I, I knew them, and uh, they put the parking here so that we wouldn't be crowded, and that made it very nice for the, uh, for the property. And it makes it nice for our, for the park that's going to be here. I kind of uh, explain both of you, if you like, um, the evolution of going from your house to City Park. Mm. Well, uh, this house was uh, uh, added on to the room you're standing in now, and the upstairs uh, was added on to the house. The architect wanted to make two rooms down here and two rooms upstairs, but we decided that we wanted to uh, just have one room and upstairs a, a, bed, a nice bedroom. And so it was uh, an ad advantageous to, to us. The main part of the house was uh, where that wall is. That was the first house we had. And a, a man by the name of Joe Pelsky uh, built it for us, and he did a tremendous job because we've been through all kinds of hurricanes, and uh, we haven't had any problem. And then in, in uh, around 2000 and uh, let's see, three, I guess would be, I had met uh, someone who worked for the Broward County um, Parks, uh, Valeria. Volan. Oh yes. And I um, actually just uh, met her sort of by happenstance through uh, uh, my work as a, as a mortgage lender. Um, we were talking and came to realize, she realized that I lived over here. And she had said that they had been, you know, interested in, in the property and, and preserving the property and had been told though that there wasn't, you know, we weren't going to sell under any circumstances. And it just, kind of happened that that was a time when mom and dad were thinking about, you know, what they were going to do. It was an awful lot to maintain. It was an awfully big house and we're considering what their options were. Uh, Wilton Manors was going through a building boom and uh, so we knew that the, the value of the property was going to go up and property taxes were going to get more burdensome. So we talked about that as an option and um, so Valeria kind of got got the county started and then it became a cooperative effort with the city and the state and the county and uh, well the, uh, the subdivider Lanier uh, was interested and he was uh, Lenar but uh, he was uh, interested and but we decided that we would rather have it as a park and we're glad we did it's uh, uh, we're looking forward to it being completed. It really was. It was something that you know we talked a lot about and took an awful long time, uh, more than two years to complete, from the beginning stages of discussing the park to it being completed, and so that was a, a long and difficult process. But uh, well, the, the the difficult part was is that the city was interested, and the county was interested, and the state was interested. So getting the three governmental bodies to on the same page was a little difficult. It was, it but they finally got on the same page and uh, we're glad. Okay. Um, talk, about, talk about the, um, the police department of Wilton Manors, then and now. Well, uh, 
I don't really know about now, uh, but the police department always was a uh, uh, a friendly uh, department, and they. Uh, I don't know of any difficulties we had in, in connection with the police department. The, uh, uh, as chairman of the uh, police uh, uh, board, uh, we didn't have any difficulties at all. And uh, it, it was a, a nice department. I was sorry to see that there's been some difficulty lately, but uh, I'm not aware of that. Well, through, through the years, they were always very very kind and it, it really was that town sense. They knew people, they knew when something seemed out of order. If the gate was open, they would stop by and ask if everything was all right. And so, you know, they, it was, they were very aware of the residents as individuals and would really notice if something was, you know, seemed out of sorts. And uh, it always seemed like they, you know, they checked up and were very, very kind of keeping an eye on, very on Making sure everything was all right. Um, how did the towers? Did you, when you were a kid, did you ever like play around the towers or anything? The towers, I don't remember them as all as a kid. I'm not sure when the towers were torn down. I was born in 1962, and I don't have any memory of the towers and Walt Manors at all. All I remember about the towers is the fact that there was a bird woman that lived in the towers, and uh, she caused quite a commotion. But. Uh, uh, otherwise, the towers, are, uh, it'd be kind of nice if they were still here, matter of fact, because they were uh, an entrance to Wilton Manors. I just wonder, what year did you come here, George? Hey, pardon? What year did you come to Wilton Manors? In uh, 19... Uh, well... Actually, uh, 37. Okay, and the other thing I think, you said that all the bridges were here. As I remember, the 26th Street Bridge was not there, and James Dean was instrumental in getting it connected back in, it's in the history book. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. And also, do you remember uh, an ice cream parlor where wings and things are? called Main Street. I remember an ice cream parlor down there that used to take us to. Where was it located? Where Wings and Things is. Right by yes. the fire department. The chicken department. place. Yes. There was an ice no. cream parlor there. The last thing is, is there, if there's anything specific you want to say about Wilton Matters? Uh, the, the only thing that I'd like to say about Wilton Matters is I miss it. And uh, we, we had a wonderful life here. Um, it was a wonderful place to raise our children. And uh, it's been, it was delightful. And I'm sorry that we uh, had to move away, but uh, it, as it turned out, uh, uh, the sale of the property was ad advantageous to us. And we had about, uh, what is it? It's about three and a half acres, I think. Three and a half acres. And uh, that, uh, all I can say is that we just had a wonderful life here. And uh, um, just adding on that, growing up, it was a, it was a wonderful place to, to grow up. In 1995, I decided to build uh, my house here on the property. And um, as, a, as a family, we we talked about it in Dad's leadership. Uh, they decided to keep it as a park, and that was extremely important to me because if it wasn't going to remain a park, then I, I wasn't going to stay. And I really wanted to stay in that house. And, and so having this preserved um, forever is you know, really important to me. I, I feel very connected to it um, and to the city of Wilton Manors. I'm thrilled to, to live in Wilton Manors, and there really isn't any place that I'd rather live. Oh, and I would also like to mention that we're grateful to the city and the county and the state, the fact that they're going to keep the house, because it's going to be very nice to be able to 
come and visit once in a while. Great, thank you very much. And thank you. Okay. Did you want to show the ledger book? Oh, the picture yeah. of the ledger book. And also the historic pictures that the Old Man's Historical Society gave to Ellen and George. This is a, uh, a, a ledger that we used uh, showing that the... Um, Keep track of the books for the... It's $2 was the, uh, uh, the Greens fee, magnificent sum of $2, and the carts were 50 cents or 25 cents for uh, nine holes. And this is wonderful. We, I've just been given this, and uh, this is uh, Wilton Manor's. Uh, uh, and, and, and did you say it was an update on the? Uh, on the There'll be another one. Right. Okay. And uh, this is wonderful, and we'll we'll cherish it. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, attempt to get more pictures to be able to help Diane uh, uh, complete what, what she has to do. Let me get it closer. Just go ahead and move on to the pages that were uh, before. Okay. Okay. I'll be able to cut away, cut into this one you weren't talking about. 